Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Limited to Limitless Actualization Series. My name is Isabel Chiara, and I'm presenting to all of you some of the most amazing healers, life coaches, and visionaries in the world to uncover and help remove limitations and blocks that are keeping you from having your limitless life. And today I have the pleasure of introducing all of you to Susan Shatzi, who is, I consider, a huge visionary in life. Uh, we've been chatting and um, Susan, welcome. Thank you so much. Actually, my last name is Schatzer, kind of like William Shatner without an N. It's a Z, Schatzer. Okay, Schatz, Schatzer. Yeah, I can be a Schatzer. You know what, since, since I've spoken to you and I've spoken to you a couple of times, I've never gotten your last name right. <laughs> what is that? That's right. You know, I think it's changing energetically. <laughs> They're just like my hair color. Right. <laughs> just, you never know who's going to show up, what, to, what it's going to look like. <laughs> right. You're so funny. Um, so Susan's a health professional, and she has 10 best-selling books. And one of them is called I'm Having It, and the other one's The Energy of Spirit. She's an international consciousness, consciousness facilitator, and she works with clients to unlock their limitless life. And now she's embarking on a TV show that's called Unlocking Your Limitless Life that you can find on um, binge watching. I didn't even know that was a program or an app. And uh, so you can watch her program. So Susan, I'm so thankful that you're here. And uh, so we've gotten to know each other in what, the last three days? Yeah, it has been a whirlwind, but of course it was all divinely orchestrated for us because I'm from Massachusetts, you're from Connecticut, so we both have, in fact, I wore this just for you, Isabel, today. I'm in Orlando, Florida, but this is my velvety, this is my winter wear. Well, my you, know it's, you know it's freezing up here still. <laughs> Yesterday we had a nice spring day, but today a little cold again. <laughs> So I wore this just for you. This is my little velvety thing. This is what we call winter wear here in Florida. It's velvet with sleeveless. <laughs> right. And your sequins and your pink. So funny. So Susan, I would love to hear about your path uh, because your life was all, wasn't always limitless. It was actually pretty limited for a long time. Yeah, I did. I've spent a lot of my life, because it was what we were taught to do. We were taught to find the answer and come mm -hmm. to the conclusion, and you had to get the right answer and make the best choice. And, you know, we were taught to do that because they were prepared. Our parents were preparing us for school because you had to get the right answer and make a good choice and sit in your seat and raise your hand in good manners and all that kind of stuff. So they actually led us and taught us into coming to conclusions, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. And Really, um, what I've discovered is asking a question is the key to unlocking your limitless possibilities. So mm -hmm. anytime you do anything else except ask a question, because a question always empowers you, anything else disempowers you. Mm. So that's one of the key things that um, I've been able to really latch on to because eight months after my son was born, I was diagnosed with a chronic illness. I realized I was in like an abusive marriage. My closest family was eight states away. You know, mm -hmm. this was not the life that I truly had hoped to live. And it was a mentor, um, Isabel, who said to me, you know, what if this is what you've been asking for? And mm -hmm. I had to sit back and I couldn't say yes and I couldn't say no. And the first time in my life, um, I had been asked a question and it wasn't like, well, which doctor are you going to next and what test are you going to have? And, you know, what is that going to mean? And what is the outcome? And what, it was all conclusion my whole life. Um, so after that question, it literally opened up like all these amazing possibilities. And so I have just launched, launched out into um, the infinite possibilities that are available to us through asking questions. Mm -hmm. yes. So the, your illness is what kind of projected you into this whole, um, you went out and started searching for uh, mentors and tell, tell us what more of like how you ended up, I mean, you wrote eight, you know, 10 books. So you didn't just have, you know, start asking questions and then come upon 10 books. <laughs> what yeah. like motivated you? What? Yeah. So it was one of those moments where um, I had to come to Jesus. It was like, mm -hmm. look, you know, I'm either going to a third world country, getting a stem cell transplant or taking myself off the planet. Like this does not work for me. Right. Something. 
has to change. Like I would not have come here and signed up for this. So it was like an all call to the universe that, you know, something had to change and I'm having it. And that's when the book I'm having it came out and Mm -hmm. um, it's co-authored. And I think there's like 20 other authors and it's all that moment in all of our lives where we just said, look, it's done. Whatever this pattern is, whatever this paradigm is, whatever this, you know, past life, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. karmic thing that's happening, we're done. This is, uh, we're out of here. Like we're changing this. Right. We all stepped into something else. So that was a huge aspect of it. And then all the other books really came from experiences that I've had since I've started to wake up. And I call it a waking up because I became aware that there was a possibility that I do have control over, you know, my thoughts because thoughts create things. Mm -hmm. And I really took it, you know, like I'm responsible for my reality. And when you own that, uh, you're able to look at it and and ask questions about how you'd like to shape it and change it and move it differently. Right. So I, you know, I find it really interesting because sometimes people are not really having a great life. I mean, it's not the thing to say to them, but I do do it sometimes. Like I say to them sometimes, well, you kind of created it and they look at you like, oh my God. But the truth is, right? If you can own that, you do create it on some level. I mean, you're not consciously creating illness, but you're creating some form of, you know, a negative feeling or negative limitation in your body that people can you know that as long as as soon as you start to say yeah i own this you can transform it like you just said yeah you know isabel i wanted to share something with you and your audience and it's Mm -hmm. what's hidden inside your biggest problem so Mm -hmm. whatever your biggest problem is right now for me it happened to be chronic illness i had an eight month old you know no family abusive husband hidden inside that was my greatest possibility and people are are like thinking like how could that where could you like uncut where'd you find that possibility like what rock did you turn over right. to pull a possibility out of that and i was and i said i asked a question so would you like to know the question i asked that i would I'm- love to hear that question <laughs> so i asked what's right about this i'm not getting okay and it hit me like a ton of bricks. It was like, I was in an abusive, you know, relationship, abusive Mm -hmm. marriage, and I was not going to be able to parent the way I truly had hoped to parent. I was not going to be able to do what I was here to do. Uh, Mm -hmm. My son was not going to be able to be the young man that he is now 16 years later, almost 17. Um, if that individual was still in our life. So what did I do? I went and created something that he could not handle. And it was my um, awareness when I asked that question that, look, he chose what worked for him. Right. Leaving, walking out, abandoning us was what worked for him. Right. And all these judgments were like projected on us and I had them and it was conclusions about dead be dead until death do you part and in sickness and health and how could you do that and all that kind of stuff literally i am grateful and it came to me it's like had he not walked i would not be doing what i'm doing now i probably would not be here and my son would not have the life that he has so we went from so limited i mean it was like there was no hope no limit like suicide was the option kind of a thing too wow, I am, this is incredible to be here. Like there's so many amazing things. Like I, th- I am so grateful for him and, you know, for what I'm creating because the TV show literally unlocking your limitless life, we host, you know, people from all around the world, you know, we film here in Orlando to actually bring out what's hidden, what their problem was, what was the thing that was hidden in there that ended up being their greatest possibility. I love and- that. It's dynamic. And that's why I fell in love with the title of this summit, Limited to Limitless. Yeah, because that's really where people, I mean, a lot of people have to hit bottom and it could be in anything, could be in their careers. Like they're just not happy in their careers and they're just going through the motions day to day, which is, you know, what, what many people that were already interviewed have spoken about. about. They, were, they were actually 
they had a really great life and all of a sudden they weren't happy. So they had to find, you know, then they were had to justify themselves on some level, but then they have really find deep within themselves, like what would make them, what is going to float their boat? What's their passion? What's their, you know, their thing in life. And they knew everybody knew they had something like you did, right? You, you could have, just I assume at that point you had a, a terminal illness you could have just chosen to die it would have been easier on some level you know some people think it's easier to die than do many things you know but that wasn't you weren't even thinking of that you had other designs for yourself right yeah well in my case it, it was chronic not terminal okay um, maybe terminal at the end but it was just it was it's the the prognosis is like you just progressively get worse like there was no getting better and now I don't have the symptoms that I even had 16 years ago. Right. But I'm still in tune with my body. I you know, still see my doctors regularly. We still fall through on all the labs and the blood work and things like that because, you know, you just never know what else, you know, may show up. And, you know, but it's like, you know, it's like it's, it's happiness. You know, the happiness is back in where it's not struggle and angst and challenge and not enough and lack and want and need mm -hmm. now it's like joy and fun and you know just this conscious ease you know with just being with people just being in life mm -hmm. <laughs> so tell me some of the techniques that you use to help people get to their limitless life i know that the questioning i love that part of it is a big part of it and how, what other um, modalities or techniques do you suggest with people? Great. Thank you. Yeah. So I have a, a private coaching business as well. So I work one-on-one -on -one or in small groups with people at all different stages and levels of where mm -hmm. they are. So people who are, who, if you realize that something's not working for you, you're mm -hmm. already on the way. It's people who don't have the awareness that something's not working for them, that, you know, they're just going to, it's what I kind of call like the sleeper. They're just like going through the motions and they're, they may be really happy with what they're doing. And that's great because, you know, we need all kinds of people doing all kinds of things. Um, but it's the people that are realizing that like what I have and what I've created and what I'm doing, like, like doesn't actually work for me. Um, those are the people that, you know, are looking for something else. They know there's something else there. They just can't figure out what it is. Mm -hmm. And so we get together and we do a deep dive into eliminating all of the um, stuff that has, uh, you've taken on through like all kind of lifetimes. Like we uncover stuff that you picked up from when you were in utero um, in past lives. We uncover um, things that, you know, people have decided was real, right, true, and relevant in their life because they were taught that. Um, which actually aren't for them. Um, and it's this big epiphany that starts to take place. Like you, just layers and layers and layers of what you have gets shed. Um, it's all the stuff that you're carrying around with you. Like you feel your heart is heavy. You feel, you know, like you're dragged down and weighted and you don't feel like happy and clear. Those are the kind of things we do. And we do a breath technique um, that I do with it because everything's energy. Right. Uh, scientists have, you know, pretty much explained how, you know, the amount of energy that's here in the universe is the same amount of energy that was here in the universe was first created. And, you know, you can't create it or destroy it. It just transforms. So guess what? <laughs> We've actually been here for the life of the universe. <laughs> that's right. And, and like things, material things like, you know, the food we eat, the technology we use, the clothes we wear, it's all energy. Right. And so every molecule is consciousness. Um, and so when you're willing to, because I've just kind of discovered, Isabel, where science meets awareness. Mm -hmm. so we bring in the scientific proof, the scientific facts, and then we bring in our awareness and we're able to manipulate reality. Right. So fun. <laughs> right. So in your, um, so in part of the process, so the people are, you're actually getting right down to, you're getting into the breath work and you're, they're starting to release where some of the, their trauma or their limitations are in their body is that what yeah well it's it's kind of like where um like i've worked with a lot of people who've had a lot of abuse whether it's drug abuse or um physical abuse sexual abuse whatever it happens to be it's like there's actually what's the right thing so what's right about this that you're not getting 
And there is something that's right, even about those kind of situations that the person's not getting. And it empowers them, literally. Mm -hmm. So they're not the victim that they thought they were. And there's the guilt leaves, the anger, rage, fury, hate, all that kind of stuff. Any blame that they have leaves because they actually realize that, oh my God, I chose this. Oh my God, I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like the, I co-created this here on the planet. Right. Um, and so that's really, really, really powerful. And people were able to let stuff go instantaneously. And I have, uh, I have clients, Isabel, who said to me, you know, I should have just come to you in the beginning. <laughs> so I could have saved decades of time and hundreds of thousands of dollars in therapy. <laughs> I think it's true. I think it's depend like who you work with. Also, I believe that whoever you work with is that person helps you to really help you get your consciousness more aware in the first place. And then um, it's, I feel like depending on what kind of situation that person has had and what they can see also, also depends on how long sometimes your own realization happens like how how quick it is for you to realize um you know what's limiting you what's standing in your way so that they can also um move quicker because of the work you've done i feel like a lot of people are able to move quicker in their life once they've gotten to you correct yeah, yeah sort of like um so everything has a vibrational frequency so mm -hmm. you know you know anger rage guilt shame right. that kind of very low and like gratitude love peace you know is up at the higher resonances nice. so someone um find because like attracts like here on the planet mm -hmm. so it's sort of like when someone is asking a question or they're looking for something their vibrational resonance and mine get a match so i show up in their reality or they show up in my reality whether it's through Facebook, a phone call, an email, uh, you know, I bump into someone at an event, um, their vibrational resonance is a match with mine. So it's like, I have something that they're requiring or they're having something that, that, I, that I'm requiring. And right. sort of like, you know, what if this is what we've been asking for? And a lot of times that's exactly what it is. That's true. They didn't just happen to find you. No. No, no. they were ready for you. Yeah, because when you look at just take wealth and poverty, for instance, you know, the wealthy don't go hang out with the impoverished and, you know, the people who are impoverished don't go hang out and go to school and live and party, you know, where the wealthy do. It's like their vibrational resonances are completely different. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. Not that one's good or bad and one's right or wrong. Just they're just different resonances. Right. Well, yeah. that's, that's a good place to speak about judgment right now, which is something that you speak about. Can you elaborate a little on the judgment perspective? What happens when we start judging situations that we're trying to create, <laughs> that we want? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So judgment is um, one of the ways here on planet Earth we were taught you can create from. So if you mm -hmm. judge something is wrong, then you have to do the opposite uh, right. to be right. Um, and if you judge something as good, then the opposite also has to be true. And what that is, is that's polarity or what, you know, science calls duality and polarity. Mm -hmm. and that keeps you jockeying back and forth and you can't actually be in neutral. Um, when you're in neutral, then you have access to all possibilities. If you're on the good side or the bad side, the right side or the wrong side, you can only receive those. So for mm -hmm. instance, if my point of view is, you know, I have something about, I don't know, the car I drive, say, um, then there's nothing else that can show up to me that's different because I've already decided something is a certain way about the car I drive or the relationship I'm in or the business I have. Mm -hmm. If you allow all of that to go and be in the place of neutrality, which is, okay, well, what else is there? And there's the question. So you invite in a different possibility. Right. And you step out of conclusion and step out of judgment because those just lock you up and prevent you from receiving. And if you judge any part of your life, mm -hmm. then other things can't show up as well. It's like you start to put this wall around you. So you, you start judging and you have this wall around you. So if you're looking for greater income streams, it can't get you because you have that wall around you. So even though you're just judging your body or you're just judging your living location or your car or career, you still have a wall around you 
all the way around of judgment and other things that you're looking for, like, you know, a relationship or, you know, passive income streams or whatever that happens to be for you, it can't get to you. So it has to be like an all, you know, you have to break down the walls, you know, get rid of them, the, the fences, the wire, you know, stable things, you gotta like the gates, everything has to come down. Right. So even if you're creating good judgment, so to speak, you're creating a little box around that also yeah. whatever you're trying to create that good good and right are like the hardest things for people to kind of get because they've been taught that that's right and you feel good and you've got to be happy and it's like you're not allowed to have a bad day or feel sad and mm -hmm. what's wrong with you and you know there's all of that kind of stuff and then literally if you're too happy you're wrong too people are like well what is she taking right yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> So it's like you can't be sad and you can't be happy you know what i mean it's like you're wrong if you do and you're wrong if you don't on both ways so right. yeah being in neutrality is um a great space to be because then you can invite in like tons of possibilities so in working with me like isabel we literally like dump your cup out because right now everyone's cup is so full and whatever else we put in, it's just going to land on the floor, you know, or the table. Like you can't actually receive it. It's like when you're up to here, you know, you can't hear anything else. You just need to let it out. So we just take your cup and we dump it out. And we allow you to have more space in there. And with more space, you have the ability then to actually activate and bring into your life that what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So tell us what some of the people that you've worked with have, um, tell us a good story. I love, um, you're, you've been around so many people. Besides yeah. your own story, your own story is great. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I had, um, a husband and wife, um, mm -hmm. come and we were chatting together and his, um, parents, um, his, one of his, um, family members, uh, I think it was his dad, was mm -hmm. having a lot of memory um, yes. discomfort and, you know, not being able to remember as much. And it may be a dementia, an Alzheimer's kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and so he was the son, he was close and the mom was frail and they're getting older in life. Well, he literally took on the role and the responsibility and the job of trying to figure this all out for them. Mm -hmm. And we sat back and we worked together on, you know, so you're an infinite being. He's like, yeah. And they're an infinite being. Yeah. And even infants that are born are also infinite beings. Mm -hmm. But we have this conclusion that because they're old or they're a baby, they're young, they're too old or too young to actually do these kind of things. It's like, wait a minute. When we step back and look at that, Isabel, like we're all choosing for us. And she's choosing for her and he was choosing for him. And he had such um, a discomfort with it that he was on a cruise and he could not have fun. And he ended the cruise, you know, flew back home early and was just like, not at ease, not at peace. He wasn't happy. He wasn't right. happy with himself and literally allowing him to process through what was right about this for them that he wasn't getting, that they actually had power and he didn't need to do that. Um, and he had volunteered. So there's that, you know, are you the healer? Are you the savior? Are you the helper? Right. <laughs> right. Well, all those things actually disempower other people. So it's kind of like, it's a whole new way of showing up. Really. It's a whole new way of languaging. It's a whole new way of um, being with yourself. Um, and with others in your life that allows them to actually be empowered and have choice and make decisions for themselves, which allows you to be you and choose what works for you. And so two weeks later, he went on another cruise and he had the best time he's ever had. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> they gave him a little limitless fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, I had another woman who um, she was going to go on vacation and mm -hmm. so she left. Um, and her mom was sick and her mom was in the hospital, but it, you know, they weren't sure if she was going to go or stay or go or stay. And so she mm -hmm. had promised her family this vacation and, and she chose to like leave um, and go on vacation and her mom had passed away. So for decades she had been carrying this, I should have been there, I should have right. stayed and all this kind of stuff. And actually when we walked into that, you know, what's right about this, you're not getting with that mm -hmm. question. She discovered that if she had stayed, her mom would not have been able to go. 
she would have been there keeping her mom here. And when she left and went on vacation, it actually was the gift to her mom that her mom required in order for her mom to cross over. And it was this huge empowerment for her of all this guilt of all these years that she had been taking on. It was extremely, extremely powerful. So, so freeing, huh? Yeah, yeah. Literally hidden inside your biggest problem truly is your greatest possibility. Right. Well, that's amazing. So um, thank you for the stories and your discussions on um, living in a limitless life. But um, I just really quick about your TV show, because I find that totally interesting. Um, how do you find your guests? How do you find they're, they just show up? You just know all these people. They're your clients. What? All the above. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I search for people and people are searching for me, people mm -hmm. who have a vision, a mission and a message. Mm -hmm. uh, what's amazing about the platform that we use is that you actually have control over your content versus the other platforms that are available right now. So, you know, Facebook has, there's, there's a reason why there's not a 1-800 number Facebook and a 1-800 number YouTube. Um, okay. Yeah. So the analytics and dynamics of all that kind of stuff actually is to prevent us from co-creating together. So I know many of you have noticed at the beginning of the year, all of your group sizes dropped. And Facebook had made the decision that if you know no one is accepting the invitation, then they just, or they, they weren't the ones who opted in, something like that, then they got kicked out. And literally people's group sizes like dropped, you know, sometimes better than half. And it was that kind of a thing where they weren't, you know, we weren't warned about it. We weren't told it was coming. We weren't given the opportunity to reach out to people and say, hey, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to get the can, you're going to get dropped, you know, opt in if you're ready or if you're still interested. Um, and we just woke up and, and it was gone. So there's all of these powers that be that are controlling, you know, not only our mainstream media, but also our social media as well. And right. um, it's designed to people who um, know, like, you know, and share your stuff, like you don't actually show up in their feed anymore, you know, because if they can keep all of us separated, then the they can control the change, the rate of change that we are creating in this life. So mm -hmm. with our platform, we're on all seven continents um, on every smart device. So people can watch your TV series on their smartphone and their yeah. smart watch <laughs> yeah. all the way to big screen TVs. I had a gentleman in a foreign country and he said to the bartender, is that a smart TV? And the bartender says, well, why, yes, it is. He said, okay, well, will you put this chair thing on? So he put his chair up there. All of a sudden in the bar, like his TV sh series, his shows were running all over the bar. And people were like, hey, is that you, right? And he's like, what? <laughs> and like they wanted his business cards they were giving him their business cards they wanted to connect with them he said it was like the easiest way to promote himself right. it was, I had a woman in season one she was in the airport and um she just happened to be sitting in the in the little area where you get on the plane like the staging area I'm like, yeah. and this woman turned to her and said well you know what is it that you do what do you do and she goes oh here let me show you and she pulls it up on her phone because we have an app on the phone she hands it to her. The woman watched like, you know, five to eight minutes, whips out her credit card, hands it to her and says, I'm hiring you. Oh You're my God. Amazing. Here until I'm on your books. And she yeah. was like, amazing. I don't know I'll ever have business cards anymore. She goes like, I have virtual business cards now. She has her own show. So, so, and so we watch it on download binge. Yeah. So you binge TV, binge TV. Yeah. Well, it's binge networks. Okay. So you can download that on your app, binge networks. Mm -hmm. um, when you go online um, on the internet, you can look it up by unlocking your limitless life.com, which is okay. the name of the TV show. Okay. And also, um, when you have Apple TV and Amazon Fire Stick and Roku, you can download the binge channel and we're on there. Okay. As well, and then you can look us up. And just so you know, um, Isabel, that Roku has surpassed Google with video clicks video oh, really? clicks more and this was back in the fall of last year mm -hmm. and guess who owns guess who uh google owns roku no <laughs> youtube oh they own youtube right so okay. google owns youtube and yeah and facebook owns instagram and roku surpasses all of it oh okay <laughs> that's good to know yes so this is how you have control over your content cool cool so 
Susan has a great gift for all of us. Um, and it's 12 free resources to get you more visibility in your life. Do you want to just talk about that for a minute? Yeah, I would love to. Whether we're starting out in business, we have a club, you know, that we're, that we're mm. passionate about, a hobby, a foundation, a charity. You know, we do use social media for a lot of our networking. Um, and there'll always be a place for our social media. And, you know, I, I do. I love social media. I just know that, you know, there's an aspect of it that, you know, I, I was like, I'm creating a workaround with this, having, you know, more creation with it. And in doing that, I actually identified, you know, a bunch of different free resources um, that are software or their applications or their um, website locations that actually help you to create greater ease in your life. And you're not doing so much stuff manually that you can take these and implement them in your business. And they all start out at like a free level. And with everyone, we have the hyperlink to it right there. You don't have to go research it. We give you the name of it, we explain it, and there's a hyperlink right there for you to access all that information and create. And then if you'd like to expand more, you can do that in the future, but this will definitely get you started and we're giving you 12 free resources. Wow, that's great. Thank you. And you can just hit the bottom below this interview and you'll have access to Susan's 12 free resources to get more visibility. I thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure talking to you and it was just, it's great to get to know you also. And I'm gonna watch your beautiful series that you have on right now here, Unlocking Your Limitless Life. I'm so excited. I'm here to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> when I come down there, I am gonna call you. Um, but I'm so excited about your series. It's amazing. It's just timely right now, right? I mean, isn't it? Why do we need to live a limited life, right? Like everybody has access to abundance. It's not that the other person does, it's that everyone does. You know, there's, there's enough, someone said to me once, wait, there's enough abundance for everyone. It's not first one person or another. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You are so true. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It is about so much. It has been a true pleasure of not yeah. only speaking with you, but for your audience as well. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. You too.